So in this section, we're going to focus on acids and bases and those titration reactions and how we go about calculating the titrant in our reaction based on the volume of the titrant. So in this case, we'll, we'll talk about titrating strong acids and strong bases. Then we'll get to weak acids and weak bases and talk about those differences. So in this first reaction, we're going to think about titrating a strong acid with a strong base. So in this case, the H3O plus with the OH minus, and that's going to produce water. So this is our main reaction that we're going to look at. In this reaction, we're using hydrochloric acid as the acid component and sodium hydroxide as the titrant. And you can see we've got a 0.1 molar solution of HCl and a 0.2 molar solution of NaOH. So when we have a reaction of a strong base and a strong acid, it's essentially going to completion. And this is because we have a very large equilibrium constant for this reaction. All right, so in this first titration curve, let's consider the titration of 50 mils of 0.1 molar HCl using a titrant of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. So first, only the half reaction is important because the salts that are left floating around don't really contribute to the reaction. So this is the only component of the reaction that we really need to consider. So first we need to calculate how much sodium hydroxide is needed to reach the equivalency point. So first, we need to think about the equivalency point. So at the equivalency point, we know from our reaction that the moles of the hydrochloric acid must equal the moles of sodium hydroxide, right? This is our neutralization point. So since we know that the moles of these two acids and bases have to be equivalent at the equivalency point, we can use this expression to represent the moles. Remember earlier we said we can calculate moles from the concentration of the solution, which is molarity, moles per liter, times the volume in liters of that uh, solution that's present. This will end up, liters will cancel and we'll be left with moles, right? So we're just using this expression here represented for our moles of HCl. We can do the same with the moles of NaOH. If we know that concentration, moles per liter times the, li the amount of NaOH that we used, liters again cancel out, and this is going to be our moles of sodium hydroxide. All right, so we're just substituting in this equation for the number of moles of each of these and we know they have to be equivalent at this point. So this allows us to solve for an unknown. So in this case, we need to know the volume of the sodium hydroxide, right? This is the titrant in this case, right? Needed for our titrant, which is a known volume in this case, and it is the 0.1 molar solution of HCl. We have 50 milliliters of that. And then we know the concentration of our titrant, which is 0.2 molar uh, NaOH. And then we can calculate the milliliters of the NaOH solution required to reach the equivalency point. So that's pretty straightforward. So we also know how to calculate the pH of our solutions. And for acids that completely dissociate, like HCl, we can just use this equation, pH equals minus the log of the concentration of the protons present, or H3O plus. And in this case, again, because this is a strong acid, it's going to fully dissociate. It only has that single proton to donate to solution. So in this case, the concentration of HCl is going to be equivalent to the concentration of the H3O plus. So we can put that directly into our uh, equation as the negative log of 0.1 molar solution of HCl, which is equivalent to H3O plus, and this is going to give us a value of 1 in this case. There's no units on this, but this is molarity. 
right? And so this is our concentration of protons equals one molar solution. So what happens though after we add 10 mils of our 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide solution? How is this going to change the pH in our reaction? Can we calculate that? So we can actually. So we need to recalculate how much free acid is still in our solution after we've added the amount of base that we've added to our solution. So we know the moles of HCl we have initially. We know the moles of sodium hydroxide that we've added. And then that's going to alter, right, the total volume of our solution, right? So if we started with our 50 mils of the titrand, which is our HCl solution, right, and we add 10 mils of our 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide, that means our solution is going to be 60 mils um, at the end of this portion of the titration. Right, so here we're just going to fill in our values again, 0.1 molar starting concentration of our HCl, starting volume, right? That's gonna be our calculation for our moles, right? Um, remember from our last slide, big M times the volume, it's gonna leave us with moles. So we've just substituted that into our equation. Right here, this is the same or equivalent to the moles of HCl. We do the same with the moles of sodium hydroxide added. And so we know the concentration initial, we know how many mils we've added, we put that there. And that will give us moles of NaOH added. The total volume again is 50 with our starting plus the 10 that we just added. And if we do this calculation, it gives us a, a value of 0 0.05 molar solution of HCl. That would be what the molarity of our solution would be after adding 10 milliliters of our 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. So you can see there's a big difference from the beginning of our reaction to somewhere in the middle of our reaction. So what happens when we reach the equivalency point? Right, This is where the moles of HCl and the moles of sodium hydroxide have to be equal. So in this case, the pH is going to be determined by the dissociation of water, right? So we know our Kw for water is one times 10 to the minus 14, and that this equals the concentration of the protons and the concentration of the hydroxide ions. And at the equivalency point, we also know one more thing. We know that the H3O plus concentration has to equal the concentration of the OH minus, right, at the equivalency point. So because of that, we can substitute in H3O plus for this OH minus concentration, and we can call it H3O plus squared, right? So in that case, we only have one unknown, and um, we take the square root of both sides, and we end up with one times 10 to the minus seven as the concentration of our H3O plus. This is also the concentration of the OH minus that is present as well. And then what happens beyond the equivalency point? Beyond the equivalency point, so if we run out of acid and we keep adding more base, then we're going to have more moles of sodium hydroxide than we have moles of HCl. So we just have to flip our equation a little bit and think about this now as the concentration of the hydroxide ions. They're gonna start accumulating in our solution. So we know the moles of sodium hydroxide added minus the moles of the HCl initial over the total volume should give us the concentration of the hydroxide ions. We again do our substitution with our concentrations and the volumes added over that total volume. And we can calculate the co excess concentration of OH if we keep doing the titration past the equivalency point. Right, so we know our initial concentration was 0.2 molar solution of NaOH. We add 30 mils, the equivalency point we calculated at 25 mils. So this should be an excess of the HCl in there. 
Now we have the initial concentration of our HCl was 0.1 molar solution, and we started with 50 milliliters. And the volume of the entire solution is at 80 milliliters. So this comes out once we do these calculations to 0.0125 molar solution. So you'll notice here that I didn't really convert the volumes into liters and truly calculate the moles of HCl and the moles of NaOH that were added. And that's because we have volume in the denominator as well. So once I do my calculations, the milliliters are going to end up canceling out and we're calculating the concentration of our hydroxide ions in solution. So you don't really need to um, convert the volumes in this case. They're going to end up canceling out. We'll be left with molarity and calculating that concentration. So if you were wanting to calculate the actual moles, and do a cancellation within this unit, you would need to convert your volume into liters. All right, so we've calculated our concentration of hydroxide ions, but really, what if we want to know the concentration of H3O plus in our solution? Right, we can also calculate that from this concentration using our calculation with the Kw. Right, because we know that this statement is true, that 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is the concentration of protons times the concentration of the hydroxide ions. So we can rearrange this equation up here to solve for the concentration of the protons. If we do that, we get Kw over the concentration of hydroxide ions, and we just calculated that from the previous slide. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14th divided by 0 0.0125 is 8 times 10 to the minus 13 molar, right? So if we have a, a fairly high concentration of hydroxide ions, that means we should have a really low concentration of protons in the solution, right? We can then use this concentration to help us calculate the pH, which is originally what our question was asking us. Right, so at any concentration of adding acid or base to our solution, we should be able to end up calculating the pH. So we can put that in there and get our value. And that comes out to be 12.0969. We're going to round uh, back to the hundreds position here. So this would round up to 12.10 and that would be the value of our pH at this juncture. So you can see as you're adding known concentrations of a titrant to a known concentration of a titrant, you could predict and you could calculate at, at many different values along the way and then you could create your graph, right? You could see that graphic representation of your titration and you would be able to predict then with high accuracy where your endpoint should be in that reaction. So if we did that, you calculate your concentration at many different volumes of your titrant, and you can see your plot of your points, and you would get this graphic representation. And you'll do some practice problems that are like this in class. All right, so next time we'll start addressing the question of weak acids and weak bases. And what happens when you have that type of reaction when you're titrating a weak acid with a strong base or a weak base with a strong acid?